Hi, I'm Bill McLeese with the Garage Gurus. In today's tech tip video, I'll be going over how to clean the intake valves on gasoline direct injected engine. With more and more manufacturers using direct injection on their gasoline engines, carbon buildup, which can lead to hesitation, misfires, and hard starts, is becoming an issue. However, cleaning it up isn't an issue. In order to perform this procedure, you will need a few special tools. First, you will need a grit blaster. These come in a variety of styles and price ranges, all designed to fit your budget. The next item you will need is the correct media. This is what will be doing all the work to break apart the carbon. One of the biggest concerns when selecting the media is to avoid damaging the aluminum cylinder head or the stainless steel valves, but at the same time, remove the carbon buildup. Today, we'll be using walnut shells. There are other medias available, but ground up walnut shells are the preferred media since they have the correct strength to break down the carbon, but yet are soft enough that they won't damage the valves or the cylinder head. You also need a shop vacuum to remove the excess media from the intake ports, as well as help to catch some of the media as you're blasting the valves. In some cases, you will need to remove the injector rail, so make sure you follow the bleed down procedure for the specific manufacturer year, make, and model of the vehicle that you're gonna be working on. If you do need to remove the injectors, there's an additional step of resealing the injectors. This comes with an additional special tool. Please refer to our tech tip on how to reseal direct injectors. The last and most important items will be the safety gear. You must have a face shield, preferably a hooded shield, a pair of heavy gloves, long sleeve shirt, and long pants, as well as a respirator while operating the blaster. The media can easily burn or tear through exposed skin, so you will need to cover up for safety. You will have dust flying around as you're performing this procedure, and in that dust will be carbon. You do not want to inhale the carbon dust. This is why a respirator is crucial. Other safety items are for the vehicle you will be working on. Plenty of fender covers are needed to protect the components in the engine bay as well as the finish on the vehicle. One last item is masking tape. You'll be cleaning one cylinder at a time, so you will need to make sure other open intake ports and in some cases injector ports are sealed so that media cannot fall into the combustion chambers and damage the internal components of the engine. Step one, make sure you have the replacement gaskets, bolts, and any additional parts you may want to replace while performing this procedure. Some bolts are torqued to yield and must be replaced once loosened. Step two, remove the intake from the vehicle you will be working on. Step three, load the media into the grit blaster, making sure no contaminants mix with the media. This could clog the nozzle and or get shot into the intake runner and damage the cylinder head or the valves. Step four, bring cylinder one up to top dead center. This will ensure that the valves are closed and no media will get into the combustion chamber. Step five, tape off the rest of the intake runners and injector ports. Make sure the tape has a firm seal on all of these ports so that no media can make it into the ports. Step six, cover up. Not only yourself, but the vehicle too. Since there will be plenty of debris flying around, be generous with your vehicle cover up. You'll want to wear a respirator. There will be dust and carbon flying around. You want to keep this out of your lungs. Now, we're ready to blast. Once you're done with the first cylinder and all of the media has been removed from the intake runner, Vacuum any additional media from the cylinder head and other components before removing the tape from other intake runners. You do not want to use compressed shop air because any loose particles of media could accidentally get blown right back into the open intake runner without you seeing it and have it fall into the combustion chamber when you start rotating the engine for the next cylinder. Now bring the next cylinder up to top dead center and tape off all of the other cylinders following the steps in order and continue this process until all the valves are clean. Clear any fault codes that may have been set prior to or during disassembly and reassembly. Test drive the vehicle to make sure the customer concern has been corrected. If the customer concern is only happening during cold startup, you may need to hold the vehicle overnight to verify that the customer concern has been corrected. I'm Bill McLeese with Garage Gurus, and thanks for watching. For more tech tips like these, please be sure to subscribe to our channel.